Hi everyone. Thank you so much for joining into another episode of the Connecting Dots podcast. Uh, I'm very excited to be talking to one of the big guns in the tech industry. His name is Zohib. He's based out of Seattle and he's a principal engineering manager at Microsoft. So with that, let's get right into it. How are you doing today, Zohib? I'm doing well. How are you? Great. I'm good. Thank you so much. So let's start off by uh, by me asking you about your current role as a principal software engineer. Uh, what does the role entail? Yeah, currently uh, I work as a principal software engineer manager. Um, so that's part of uh, what we kind of refer to as a management track uh, in, in Microsoft. Uh, so that uh, role, uh, at least how I think of it, is primarily three uh, things uh, that happens in a day, uh, which is essentially there's people part of it. Uh, there is the product aspect to it, and then there's the technology aspect to it. Um, so people are, of course, core to any kind of team and building any kind of product. Uh, so my job as a manager is, of course, making sure my team is enabled and empowered to do you know, their best job uh, that they can uh, at their role. Uh, and of course, along with that comes a lot of relationship building uh, across Microsoft, across our partner teams, and working with a lot of disciplines. Uh, then there's the product aspect of it, uh, which is where um, um, we like I'm, I work with a bunch of designers, researchers, uh, product managers to, uh, to kind of see what we actually are building, um, like uh, uh, the product we're building is the right one for the customer as well. What's the value of that to the customer? What's the value of that to the business? Um, and kind of uh, going from there then becomes the technology aspect of it, which is the execution part. Uh, and that's where as a manager, I'm mostly responsible, like my team is responsible, of course, for finding the solutions. For me, it's, uh, for my responsibility is more like uh, making sure the direction of the technology and the decisions being made uh, are the right ones from an overarching perspective as well. So that is what kind of entails um, generally in my um, uh, role. Right. Um, uh, so so with this role, uh, is it is it more like you have a principal engineer for for a whole product or is it that it's based on a feature level so that let's say there is a principal engineer uh, which is handling end to end uh, delivery of uh, a singular feature for a product. Right. So my role as a manager, uh, so I have a team of engineers uh, working with me. Um, so uh, as part of that team, I have uh, people who are either early in career, mid career, and pe people who are principal uh, engineers as well. And I think their role or their responsibilities differ based on what career stage they are at. Um, especially if, when it comes to principal engineers that are in the team, uh, they they are the ones who handle a uh, a much more broader aspect of a product. Like they, they, they are not only the people who are executing on it. They're also the ones that who are finding new things to work on. Whether it's um, you know finding the right technical challenges that we haven't identified uh, at a product level, or or anticipating what might be coming based on some of the business goals we have. That's where principles you know drive a lot of that. Uh, then there are of course mid-level senior engineers that who 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 work on driving a feature crew um, and 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 being autonomous in building something basically. And then you have early in career uh, people who who uh, I would say mostly uh, are the ones who are just getting into the industry. So they're learning kind of the tech part of it first. Um, and then the goal is for them to become gradually more autonomous over time as well. Right. So now that you have a decade long career at Microsoft, um, so looking back at it, what do you think should the first five years for someone in tech should be spent on? Mm, that's an interesting question. So I think there is one thing that when I joined Microsoft as well, coming from kind of uh, university to uh, uh, how I saw different, there are a few things. One is of course, the kind of vastness of the different type of technologies uh, and the tools surrounding it that's being used along with the, the, all the processes. So it's, it's understanding of course, one is purely the tech part of it. Like you want to be a great developer, especially coming in, you want to have that enthusiasm, you want to have that learning mindset. So I think the initial goal should be learning, like core, is, is learning. And the other aspect is, uh, which is something I personally never had in the university or not as much, is a, like software is not built in, a, in an isolation. Software is built in a very collaborative environment. And that's where you have to work with a lot of different kinds of people uh, that are not just in your team, but across your team as well. And, and kind of learning to do that and learning to how to build those relationships over time, I think that is very beneficial, especially in your um, earlier you know, few years in, in, in industry. So after you've started uh, in this engineering leadership position, what myths do you think have been busted for you? Oh, interesting. Uh, for me personally, I think there is this notion with management as well that you have authority and you you know command by authority or anything. I think that's 
totally bogus that not at all uh, i think you 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 don't lead by authority you lead by influence basically uh, which is even the people in your team like you you, you it, like, yes there might be sometimes when you can ask them to do something but at the same time you want to influence them by energiz- energizing them uh, you know behind a vision or behind a product or what they are building they need to have some kind of a purpose behind that as well similarly when it comes to working with broader set of uh, uh, partners across microsoft like that's uh, uh, then in that case you, like you need to build that relation and have that soft influence across so that you can all together build something that's great for the customer um and 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 trying to see how you can um uh, kind of align all those you know various interests uh, that that people may have so that was kind of one of the myths that was busted for me very nice um so other than that since you are a manager so what what are the core values that you think that are that you live by every day and with that you lead your team or or let's say lead by example so to speak yeah. so yes i think that's a that's a that's a great point so we have this um we have like very internal kind of model of this management called uh, model co- coach and care uh, which is essentially as a manager you need to you know demonst- do all these three things which is uh, one is you first need to care about your people uh, not just at a, a level of uh, um, kind of just the work part of it but rather you know them as a person as well like you know uh, because right now work and life is kind of very intermingled in a way as well uh, then at the at the second one is model like you have to model the behavior you want them to exhibit like you can't just say you know you you have to show kind of you know and they have to see you doing that again and again and that's you know when they start actually showing the same behavior as well uh, and and the lastly is is going to be coaching uh, like coaching is 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 a is a is a process it's a journey um, that i think as a manager even i'm learning how to be a better coach as well but that's part of it but yeah my ultimate goal is like for my team to be become more autonomous and more empowered to build product um so that they they don't have to reach out to me for making decisions but rather they can do that and they have the the the, the power to do that um um and and as they grow basically mhm no that is uh, that is super profound and uh, i must say that uh, i guess if we are empowering our our team then i guess whenever we grow in ranks then they would be empowered enough to take that leadership role yeah. after all and that's how the chain is going to continue um other than that tell me about a certain product or a certain project that you worked that you've worked on in your career that you're really proud of oh okay uh <laughs> huh, interesting so i mean I, as far as it's not uh, confidential yeah, yeah yeah right 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 i think yeah. uh one i think one of the the bigger one for me was um so when i joined microsoft i've been in various teams basically over the time um as well i think the the one team that i have been for the last 6 years probably now is the outlook web app um so that is the one that's powering the enterprise web client for outlook that's powering hotmail.com and outlook.com um and we when i joined that team that was written in a very kind of intern in-house built framework but then as we saw that the open source world and the technology that was available in open source world we had a whole rewrite of that product and i was of course part of that effort as well uh, and for me that was getting that from literally nothing like uh, again as a pa- as a part of a bigger crew uh, and getting it to shippable state and deprecating the whole experience was very you know kind of good find for me uh, that hey you know we as a team kind of built this product Nice, super cool, super cool. Uh do you have any cool traditions at work? <laughs> Ooh, uh so I think one traditions uh huh. Uh, I think one thing that I actually like from a cultural perspective that we have is something what we call as a fix hack learn. Uh so that is a thing that uh, our team or our organization does every I think two to three times a year which is you have one week dedicated so you're not all meetings are canceled no work is expected um and then you either you know fix something that you ever wanted to fix you hack a product doesn't have to be related to the product that you're working on it could be totally something different or you can actually do some kind of a learning totally outside of your boundaries as well and we've seen like amazing stuff like people doing in just one week uh, out of that and it's it's always very motivating to see that that sounds really amazing <laughs> i'm getting goosebumps right now <laughs> uh anyways um how do you comment on the work life balance situation since now that again i'll re- reiterate that uh, you're in a leadership position and uh, this goes without saying that um, you know with great power comes great responsibility <laughs> so how's that situation for you right now <laughs> right yeah i think that's very interesting uh work life balance is is always a is always a challenge as well but i think is this uh, coming back to you know that model part of it like i i want to model the behavior that i want my team to also uh, do as well which is which includes work life balance i think this is where i think 
I personally had to be more um, um, strict on kind of setting my boundaries for myself, which includes, of course, uh, especially when we started becoming, you know, virtual in the last two years. Uh, I think first uh, was there was no difference of space, which means there was no end of day per se, end of work day. Like, you know, previously, of course, you you, you commute to home, that's your end of work day. But here is, is the, the boundaries are pretty much blurred as well. I think that was certainly like for me was, you know, setting uh, like some notion of time when I'm doing and some ritual of actually closing up. Like I have a ritual of when I shut down my computer or I, I do certain things to, to, and that mentally triggers like, oh, my end of day is, is, is done. Another part is, especially when I'm taking some time off, I, I delete my email app. Um, I know my, my, my team and others have my phone number in case if they need to, need to reach out to me uh, uh, for, for any kind of emergency purposes. But otherwise, I delete my app because uh, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a very, uh, it's a habit of like, you know, scrolling emails as well. So once the app is deleted, there's too much friction for me to download the app and check emails as well. So it's like, I think doing these kind of things to, to certainly, you know, try, try forming some boundaries in terms of um, uh, what to do. And I go, again, I think that's where, um, like my team support, my organization support also helps me do that. Right. So in your opinion, how should feedback be given and how should it be perceived for one's growth? Right. I, I think this is a very interesting question. And here I would also differentiate like coaching is separate from feedback. But when it comes to feedback, I think you have to decouple the person from the situation. Like the feedback should be not, hey, the person did something, but it's like the person and the situation. Like when that melded together, what happened and what could have been done better? Because that's how it 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 becomes less personal and then a bit more objective, even for them to realize, you know, coming out from that, that it was the situation with, of course, you know, their behavior that they need to improve, but it was not just them, basically. Um, and I think that's kind of one approach to uh, kind of giving uh, constructive feedback to people, which, which people listen to as well. And at the same time, I think people, like, I also see a lot of, like, positive reinforcement also helps. Like not only like, hey, when you see something not going as you expect, they like give feedback. You also give them feedback when things are going good. When you see them doing something good, like give them feedback saying that, hey, you did this amazing basically. Like, thank you for doing that. Uh, because then, you know, then they start exhibiting more of that behavior as well. Um, so, so it's feedback is not only negative. Like we should also focus on, on giving them more of this positive feedback in a more uh, like consistent manner as well. Like don't wait for a long time for giving feedback, especially if it's a, if, if it's a, something much more bothersome, it could be something that could affect them more. Like if, if you see patterns over time, that then, you know, that, that's a separate one. But if they did something in that moment, then give them feedback immediately as well. Nice. Very nice. So switching gears a little bit, uh, since we've uh, graduated from the same university as we were talking uh, before uh, the interview. So I'm very excited to know about your experience <laughs> at Fast Lahar. Uh, they, as far as my experience is concerned, I can say if somebody can take one thing out of uh, those four years, I think that's programming. Everybody knows how to program. <laughs> it doesn't matter what your major is. <laughs> yes, yes. So how's your, how was your experience over there? Yeah, my experience was um, interesting. Um, I mean, there were, of course, you know, fun, a lot of fun moments, a lot of down moments, up and down, and all of that happened as well. I think overall, it was, it was definitely it prepared me um, in, to a certain extent, of course, you know, the, the depths of programming and kind of the fundamental stuff. Like, I think I still. I still like my, my foundations, at least in terms of when it comes to fundamentals for programming are still from that era. Of course, over time, you know, you, you learn to learn stuff as well. And that, that's something I got out of that as uh, out of that university uh, as well is like, hey, you're not given something just to do. You're giving something that you need to learn and then do as well. Um, and, and I think that kind of also stick uh, with me uh, over time. Right. And then, of course, the mm -hmm. uh, lastly would be, I think, the friendships uh, and all the, you know, the, the, those great moments, you know, that, that we had over time uh, as well. Right. So since you're coming from a very technical standpoint, I want to understand that, in your opinion, how should academia better align themselves with the industry needs? Yeah, I think uh, there is certainly in, in university aspect of, you know, the, the technical side of things. I think th th that uh, maybe a lot a lot of other people can comment as well. I think it's coming back to the same, which is what I um, had, I, I, I felt that I didn't had when I when I came to the industry was more of this soft skills and, and how to be a professional, basically, in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a very big industry as well. I think that's very um, critical. Like, I think 
one one instance that happened to me in university, which I think was very much aligned to this, and and I always kind of refer back to was like this one particular professor, one particular course where something happened that was very aligned with industry. So we had this professor. What he did was, um, so he asked everyone like, hey, you have a team project, build a group of I don't know seven people or something. Everyone came up with the list of people they want to work with, and then what he did was he actually randomized and make sure no person goes to the one that you initially decided because people have this tendency to work in their comfort. Like, you know, in this in this social group, in their friends group, basically as well. And what he tried to teach us, and I didn't get that probably at that time, was like he wanted us to work with people we have we haven't talked to before, or we haven't worked with them in the past as well. And that's where you get to learn, like, hey, how do you actually, um, you know, work on something, um, have different opinions, come to consensus about something, and and get things done basically as well. I think that was a great moment in my university when that happened, and I think more of those things should happen in terms of uh, like building those soft skills, building those professional skills, um, uh, along with of course the technical ones. Nice. I'll give you an example from my experience uh, when I was at university. So I I took this uh, uh, engineering entrepreneurship course, and uh, the professor kept saying that uh, the sa- same thing that you just mentioned that you know you should meet with other people that you're not comfortable with because that's the only way once you become an executive that you're going to be okay in socializing with them, right. pitching them ideas and whatnot. So initially. I was a little reluctant because I was like, I know my friend friend circle and, you know, we get things done and whatnot. So maybe I guess I got a lemon because uh, <laughs> when I got into that group, man, nobody worked. <laughs> but yeah, that's, I think that, that's the thing. Like that's, you know, you get to know like, hey, you, you'll, you'll get to encounter a lot of different people from industry. And so yeah. you need to figure out how to work. <laughs> no, for sure. Uh, that is something that I still laugh about sometimes. <laughs> Anyways, um, considering uh, engineering leadership roles uh, in the industry, do you think a PhD is is something that would boost your foundation? Mm. Uh, I think unless you want to be part of industry which is very niche and is doing some research specific project, like an example is in Microsoft, there is a whole division of Microsoft Research. Uh, which is where you know research they hire researchers who are partly engineers as well and work on very very specific problems. So unless you you want to do something like that, um, in my experience, PhD doesn't have as much of an impact on you know the, the rest of the 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 the, the, the various rules that have, that are in industry or the majority of rules. Right, right. Um, so now switching gears a little bit again and talking about career progression. Uh, do you think it is, uh, well, consider, first of all, let me give you a little pre- uh, preface. So considering the tech situation right now, that there's so much overlap and then people are hopping around all the time. Uh, so in your opinion, what do you think? Would it be better for someone to stay within an organization and grow through the ranks? Or would it be better for them to switch places and maybe get external experience? Because it's just the same thing that if you, if you wouldn't experience something external, external or foreign to you, you, how would you know what's going out there in the world, right? Right, right. Hmm. Okay, that's a pretty good question. Uh, I think in that regards, how I would perceive it is, of course, a person may have multiple motivations of moving, but I think I'm going to leave the other aspects of it and focus on the, the exact part which you mentioned, which is like their growth and their learning part of it. Uh, and and that's where uh, I think you need to find a place where you're challenged, whether it's either inside the company, inside the same team or outside the team uh, or outside the company as well. It could be all like in, an example is that Microsoft is a very huge organization, like people spend decades, but that doesn't mean they haven't. Uh, they, they are in the same team. Many people actually go from working on OS to assembly to like something, you know, totally cloud and all that stuff as well. And 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 they, they kind of reset themselves and challenge themselves again as well. And I think the other part is you, you, you certainly don't want to move quick enough. Like you want to be there so that you can see the, the fruits and the learnings from your decisions that you made. Uh, because you, like you make a decision, you do something, it, it doesn't manifest immediately in like a couple of months. Like sometimes things take over a year or so uh, for you to start observing what is what happened with the decisions you've made as well. So unless like you see that perspective, you you all you'll have is like, hey, I did this, but you would never get to learn what what, what could have been better basically in that decision as well. Like I think one of the things, you know, when I see things I've done in the past, some things I've done in the past when I'm looking at right now uh, and, and the things that are happening, I'm like, oh my God, why did I make this decision? But then there are some things that actually worked well and I'm like, okay, that decision in that moment was actually a right decision as well. And, and that's where I learned um, kind of, you know, what was right and what was wrong as well. So if you're not present there for some of the, you know, that rep, 
kind of consequence or repercussions, both good and bad of your decision, then you're also limiting your learning in that ways as well. But certainly you should find a place where you're challenged, either it's your team um, or, or, or some, somewhere outside. Right. Um, so again, considering that you are in a substantially, uh, uh, I would say, a position that brings a lot more challenges every single day. So how do you try to keep yourself up to date with the changing trends in industry? Yes, I think that that is something very um, kind of one of the things that when I moved to the management role, um, I think I started gradually losing that touch, uh, at least with the core part of the code as well. And again, of course, because I trust my team to make the right decision um, uh, when it comes to more of this day-to-day -day, uh, kind of work as well. But I definitely, as an engineering manager, need to have a tap in the industry in terms of what's happening in the wider tech world. So I can see what kind of product that enables to be built over time as well. And what I personally do is, um, I mean, I certainly um, kind of read a lot of technical blogs um, as well. I, I read some you know, technical books as well, management books, you know, apart from that as well. Another thing I personally do is I, I have one like blog as well. I mean, I'm not very consistent, but that's something I've been uh, using as part of my learning and publishing. Like whenever I learn something, I try to write that down because I think the act of writing and down and teaching that actually solidifies more of your learning as well. So, so it's, it's like, I, I, yeah, that's why like I do a bunch of uh, tech reading and, and try to do some small projects if I can um, as well to kind of keep on, you know, uh, not, not having that skill atrophy. No, definitely. I was checking out your uh, profile on medium.com and I can definitely say that you've written uh, multiple well-written pieces on technology. That's pretty cool. So how did that initially started? Like how did that interest in you started that, hey, I'm going to write down, let's say weekly, monthly or whatnot, that I'm going to pursue this formally? Yeah, I think uh, it was, and I started this like even before the management part, like I, I've been on and off writing that for like, I don't know, seven, eight years now. And I think that started from the act for me personally, whenever I write something down to explain someone, as, as, as a process of doing that, I start understanding more of that thing. Uh, because when I'm writing down some uh, something to explain someone, then I'm actually trying to get into the depths of you know what I did and how it works, and and then trying to explain that and and just the act of that, I started enjoying it as well. Um, so when I get time, that's you know that's how I kind of got into it. Right. And so hey, with that, I I believe you seem like a man of confidence. So I definitely want to ask you about your mentors. Um, like who had they been, or how did you reach out to them, or or how had they, they been instrumental in your uh, journey? Right. Yeah, I think I, I I think I never went through any formal process of you know selecting a mentor or anything. How it happened to me, I have a couple of friends who are um, you know in 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 my workplace and outside of my workplace as well who are in the tech industry and are kind of ahead in the career timeline. Uh, and those are the people who I reach out to um, whenever I have something to discuss, you know, and and then you know talk about, about it with them. Uh, and then I have this varied opinion, and and that's when you know kind of I learn from that. Another aspect of what I think of it is like more of this passive uh, or part of mentoring is I I observe people in in, in work. Uh, it's like hey, if 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 I I know if I'm not good at something, and I observe someone doing you know that think well, then I actually am like, okay, I need to, I need to start, you know, doing, emulating some of that behavior as well and trying to do better at that. And thirdly is just books. Um, I think uh, books is, is very crucial. I think it's a, it's kind of a life hack um, as well. If you, if you, if you start forming some of the habit of that um, and yeah, books are in a way kind of, you know, the, the authors and, and the, are, are, are your mentors as well. Very nice. Um, so what's your definition of success in life right now? Because I mean, it keeps changing with every phase that we pass through in life. So what's your current definition? Right. I think, I think, yeah, the, the, I think life is, is definitely much more broader than the, just the work aspect of it. And I think that's where success is how, at least I perceive it is, 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 is various, you know, buckets of it. There is of course the, the career aspect of it. Uh, that's where, you know, um, I want to make sure I'm building a product that has a very broad impact across the world. Um, and, 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 and at the same time, I, I get fulfillment from kind of, uh, uh, helping people get, get to, you know, their goals as well. So that's kind of my, my you know, something that also fulfills me, um, as well. Then there's the part of uh, my personal hobbies. So I have, I have a couple of hobbies that I'm into and it's like getting better at that hobby, doing that more of that as well. And then thirdly is just, you know, people in your life, uh, which is, you know, the relationships you have, the, the friends you have and, and kind of maintaining that, uh, that social aspect of it as well. So I think all of that kind of this trifecta <laughs> combined, I, I would consider if all of them are going good, I'm like, okay, you know, you're, 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 you're heading towards success. 
Very nice, very nice. So, uh, taking the conversation a little bit towards the fun side of things, uh, what things excite you in life in general? Uh, so, are you talking about outside of work? <laughs> yeah, yeah, just life right now. I think, I think in, in life generally, yeah. um, I think a lot of, um, I mean, I, I'm, I, I believe I'm an optimist uh, when it comes to kind of world and where the future is, is, is as well. Like a lot of things that excite me is, you know, all the things that happening in the tech industry, in the space industry um, uh, as well. Um, so I think all of that kind of gets me very excited in terms of uh, the progress that's being made. Uh, of course, there's a lot of to do um, uh, in the world as well and a lot of problems to solve. But I think we, I feel like that we were heading in the right direction and with the, with the right in, in, uh, energy as well. Right. Considering that you hail from a tech background, what's your favorite piece of uh, technology uh, invented right now? <laughs> oh, huh. Uh, interesting. Uh, so I'm, I generally um, kind of focus a lot more on the web technology part of it. And I think one of the things, technology that I've been trying to um, find some time to learn more about is uh, something called WebAssembly. Uh, I think that to me is, 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 is going to kind of you know, bring a lot of new people to, to, to the web tech as well. And also bring a lot of web technology to other platforms that, you know, that haven't been there as well. So I think that is one of the technologies that I'm very looking forward to, like what its, its impact is going to be um, and kind of where it's heading as well. Right. And now considering the fact that how much uh, the big tech companies have enabled the whole world, they have empowered uh, a lot of different population and all sorts of segments of populations, what do you think, in your opinion, the world is going to look like 50 years from now? Huh. Um, I, it's, it's, it, I, I, or I would actually answer it like how I hope it looks like. Like I sure. hope yeah. uh, in, in regards to like we, we have enough, enough, enough automation or, or other like improvements in industry that a lot of luxuries that are not much more mainstream becomes mainstream for people as well. Um, um, then there's the part of uh, um, uh, kind of, again, this, this um, I'm, I'm, I, I love the, you know, kind of the space and cosmos as well. And that's where I'm very uh, hopeful that, you know, we'll be probably at Mars or, or on moon or have some bases there as well. So that's a, certainly something that excites me, um, you know, um, uh, as well. So I think that's where I hope like take technology uh, and along with like building like having more people outside of their countries collaborating with each other especially you know with this new uh, virtual you know kind of world and and, and being on uh, uh, online as well like that would enable people having similar opportunities that people didn't have there in their own places as well in their own countries like now you know with and again this this currently is specific to tech but i'm hoping more and more industries can leverage that as well which is like a person you know working in pakistan can have the same opportunities that are working for, uh, in in usa as well like they don't have to move all the way half the way uh, around the world to get the same opportunities as well like that's one of my hope is like kind of you know balancing that uh, that plane for everyone yeah, honestly, the way the startup spectrum is looking like in Pakistan, it is right. so hopeful and makes me so much uh, yes. proud as a Pakistani yes. as well. <laughs> totally, totally. Uh, yeah. it's, it's, it's very exciting what's going on there. Yeah. Uh, what advice would you give to your younger self? Huh, uh, I think it's... I so I I mean as a younger self as well like I was very uh, much of a kind of a nerd geek like I was super into uh, the technology not saying I, I I'm not today as well but I think it's it's I think one of the things that I would kind of tell myself back then is like hey like be a person who's much more broader than one specific thing uh, like be a well well rounded person like have yeah. more things in life uh, to do have not only have one purpose in life have various different purposes in life as well um and 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 yeah i think that's kind of what i would say to myself very nice so thank you so much Zohib. with that we'll uh, we'll close off the conversation and ladies and gentlemen let me tell you this had been the best 30 minutes that i've spent so far lately <laughs> <laughs> well, um, thank you so much for being here with us, Zohaib, and sharing your insights. I had a lot of fun and I, I, I really hope our audience uh, feel that energy and uh, try to draw some conclusive insights. Um, with that, if you haven't already subscribed, please feel free to subscribe to the channel, check out our content for other useful videos on other engineering roles. Um, if you like the content, please feel, free, uh, feel free to share it with your friends and family. And this podcast is definitely going to be hosted on all major streaming platforms. And until the next episode, take care and see you. Bye.